Hi everybody, I'm back and I have an experiment that you can use when you're teaching chemical and physical changes. Chemical and physical changes can be a difficult topic for students to understand, even though it is relatively simple once you break it down. After you're discussing states of matter, it, typically you will go into a chemical and physical change unit. And this unit is just letting students know how matter changes. It's either going to change physically or chemically. Physical changes are changes that no new substance is created. So something as simple as tearing a piece of paper would be an example of a physical change. I teach my students that there are four ways typically that you can tell if a chemical change occurred. So they include a change in color, a change in odor, uh, energy is either absorbed or released, and a gas or a solid is produced. So with this, I developed a couple different activities that I use with my students, and then they have to decide, first of all, if the change is a chemical change or a physical change. And then if they think it's a, phys a ch chemical change, then they have to determine which of the four reasonings would give them the thought that it is a chemical change. So the experiment that I'm going to do today um, students are going to tell whether baking soda and vinegar will cause a chemical change. Now in some ways this experiment is super simple. Um, students have, most, most of them, understand what will happen if baking soda and vinegar combine. Some students have never seen this before, so it will be brand new to them. But for those students that do have the background knowledge, this is now going to add another layer on top of it. So they may already know what happens but now they should be able to explain why this is happening, which is very important. So what I do first is I give the students the problem, and the problem is how can baking soda and vinegar cause a chemical change? So right there, most of the students will understand that this is a chemical change. Your struggling learners may need to be brought to the realization that this is going to be a chemical change. Students will then develop a hypothesis, and students should understand at this point that a hypothesis is their guess. If their guess is wrong, that's completely fine. I like my students to just come up with reasonable guesses as to why they think something is going to happen. At the end of the experiment, they should know whether or not their hypothesis was true or not. If it wasn't, now they should be able to determine and be able to explain why it wasn't true and why their problem occurred. So the materials that we're going to use today is an empty water bottle. You should have enough white vinegar to be able to fill the water bottle about halfway. Three teaspoons of baking soda, and I pre-measured this out. I have this in this cup already. A balloon. Now, if you follow me with my Seeds of Matter experiments, um, the balloons I get at the Dollar Tree, they're relatively cheap, they're a dollar. Um, I usually pick up a couple packs, and I use these for multiple experiments throughout the year. Um, typically, these in, these materials I'll use for a couple different units, so I really like to stretch my budget a long way. Um, another thing that you can have is a funnel. If you don't have a funnel, it's not a big deal. The funnel just makes it easier for one of the steps that we're going to do. If you don't have a funnel, you could just take a plastic cup, and you're just going to pour the baking soda into the balloon so you can just um, you know smush the plastic up a little bit so that the baking soda will easily go into that balloon. And then I also do everything in a disposable pan, um, especially in the classroom. Sometimes the experiments can go awry and things can spill and it can make a mess. So I feel like if it's falling into the disposable pan, that makes cleanup very simple and very easy if there is a, an accident or a mess of any sort. So I am following along with my chemical changes activities, and if you're interested, I'll link this in the comments. But this tells you everything that you need to know. It gives the students the background information on what a chemical change is and the four ways to tell if a chemical change occurred, and then I, it walks them through this process. So right now I'm going to follow the procedure that's listed in this experiment. Um, and first. Using the funnel, we're going to pour three teaspoons of baking soda into the balloon. So I'm going to take my balloon. I'll use a blue one for the experiment. And then you're going to place the funnel in here. And like I said, if you have 
a cup, you're just going to want to manipulate this so that the cup can easily pour the baking soda into it. And depending on your funnel, you may just have to work the baking soda into it a little bit. I actually got this from my husband's garage. He does not know, but he is helping us with this experiment today. Okay, so you have the baking soda that is in the balloon. And then you're just gonna put this to the side. I'm just gonna put this in the disposable pan right now. Then you're going to pour the vinegar into the empty water bottle. And again, it's at about half white. So this you can kind of eyeball. And it's up to you whether or not you want to demonstrate this for your students or if you trust your students to do this on their own if they're mature enough. I've done it both ways in the classroom depending on the group of my students. Sometimes I'll just have them gather around me and we'll do this in the front of the classroom. Other years, I will set up stations. Um, the activities that I have, there's eight different activities in there. So I'll usually set up, I, I usually don't do all eight at once. Some of the experiments do take a, go through a couple days, but I'll set up about four stations and then the students can rotate through those stations. It could be multiple days, it could be throughout one day. It's all depending on your classroom and what you have time to do. Okay, so I fill the water bottle with vinegar, I have the baking soda in the balloon. And again, you're going to want to put the water bottle with vinegar in the disposable pan, just in case there's any sort of a mess. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna take the balloon and carefully stretch this out over the water bottle. Now, you're not putting the baking soda in yet, you just want it so that it is completely covering the top of the water bottle. And this sometimes, if you're having students do this on their own, you may want to have one student hold the water bottle with the vinegar so that it doesn't spill, especially if they're not using the pan. Because I've had incidences where, the, you know, it's completely innocent and an accident. It, students don't understand how to manipulate the balloon on top of the water bottle, and then it can spill, and that causes a little bit of a mess. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, when the students are ready, you wanna make sure that everyone's paying attention, we are going to tip the baking soda into the balloon and you can see what happens. And this really, you know, the students have seen how baking soda and vinegar mix and what happens, but to see the balloon blow up like that and to be able to hear the sounds. I like that the mess is all contained in one area. It's a great, great visual for that. Now this is actually teaching them, because now what will happen is the students will write down their observations and there's going to be conclusion questions for them to answer. And if we go back to those four different ways to tell if a chemical change occurred, this would be number four on there, that a gas was produced. And that gas, we could definitely see because it filled up the balloon. A lot of times it's very difficult for students to see when a gas is produced and understand that there are gases out there because they're invisible and a lot of times they don't have an odor. But this experiment I feel is the perfect one for them to be able to really visualize that. So again, if you like this experiment, let me know. Comment below if you have any questions. Please comment below and let me know. And if you are interested in this packet, I'm going to include this in the comments. Have a great day.